For more on this, let's bring in Robert Garcia, senior meteorologist with the National Weather Service. Uh, Robert, thanks for joining uh, us. I'm impressed by how quickly you guys were able to head out and survey this. About how far away is it from the National Weather Service office, and what was some of the uh, data that you guys found? Well, good afternoon, and uh, thankfully we had a, a member of our team that was headed home, and they live in that area, and another one of our team members was able to join them, and so we were able to get out there pretty quickly. Um, they they did discover some damage um, related to a tornado that occurred this afternoon. It was rated EF0. Um, a lot of the damage was related to trees, although unfortunately there was a, a semi-tractor semi trailer that was uh, toppled onto its side and the driver was injured. So that was something that the uh, Miami-Dade County Police was contending with when they arrived. But um, thankfully it looks like most things were cleaned up and uh, we were able to capture the data and uh, um, find that it was an EF0 in the damage survey. And, and Robert, what we're looking at, this has been several warned storms in South Florida today. This one actually wasn't a warned storm. Can you kind of talk about the dynamics as this kind of pushed through uh, towards the homestead area? Sure. Well, part of our damage survey is reviewing the event and kind of trying to learn from it. That's usually, you know, learn what we can do better and how we can, um, you know, increase those uh, those warning effectivenesses. And so with these th this kind of a situation, the thing that's difficult is these tornadoes are very small features. They're not uh, super cellular, uh, well-defined features like what you would experience in some other types of outbreaks that we may have or even um, out in the Midwest. And so what ends up happening is even as close to the radar as this one was, it's such a small feature compared to the radar beam even that it's almost like looking for a fish line in the ocean. It's really, really difficult. And so what ends up happening is when we have an event like this, we'll go back, do a post-radar study to kind of compare. We do have some additional radars that we have access to in the area, and those are a little bit higher resolution than the 88D, which is a fantastic workhorse. Um, it does, you know, most of our most of the weather service that is our, our main bread and butter, but we have the fortunate advantage in this area of southeast Florida to have some terminal Dopplers, and from that, you know, we can go ahead and discern exactly maybe a little bit better detail. Looking through some of that data preliminarily, still kind of hard to spot anything there, but um, it's one of those situations where we'll continue to study things and try to kind of come up with better science to help increase warning times ahead of these kinds of storms. Right, and I don't have to tell you, Robert, these past few days, it has been so active in South Florida too, and daily chances for not just the heavy rain, I mean, you guys had that flood watch yesterday, but the severe weather, reports of hail too, and now the most recent episode uh, in Florida, we, we have this EF0 tornado. Remarkable that it was short-lived, just a couple of minutes. Speak on just the frequency of tornadoes. I think if uh, our data is right here at Fox Weather, the last Miami-Dade County tornado was back in September, September 9th of 2022, so less than a year ago. That was also a, an EF0. I know your guys' rainy season, obviously it's where, when you see most of, most of your rain, it, it begins this month. Do tornadoes form in, in, during that period too? Is it, is it common? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Tornadoes in South Florida uh, are not unusual, especially um, in, in situations like this where you have interactions between the sea breezes in the summertime. Um, in this case, it looked like we had a bit of an interaction not only between the sea breeze that was kind of pinned there in the Redland, but also um, in, in some outflow from storms that had developed further south and west in the Everglades. And so as these things interact, you can have things like what you see there on the screen spin up. And so with that, it kind of creates uh, almost like an ensemble of different things that can happen. So sometimes the atmosphere will produce really strong storms that can produce tremendous amounts of lightning, even hail, heavy rain. And in other times, you'll get things like with, uh, the tornado that happened down in, uh, in southwest Miami-Dade. So that area in southwest Miami-Dade is a very large agricultural region, but just to the east is a, a large portion of the south Miami suburbs. And so that's why it was uh, so easy to see all these captured. There's a lot of folks that live down there. The area where the tornado actually happened, though, is very rural. It's uh, a lot of agricultural fields, um, avocado trees, mango trees, and so uh, there's folks out there working. So we're always trying to make sure that we stay ahead of messaging, especially uh, the lightning risk that can emerge. But when you have things like what happened today, these strong storms, it, it can definitely be a danger to anyone trying to traverse out there. So it's just one of those things where we're always trying to keep folks weather aware 
Um, South Florida can have very quickly changing weather. And a lot of folks think of tornadoes out in the Midwest, but we do get them here. A lot of our water spouts can come ashore too. Those can be uh, counted as tornadoes when they do that. But in general, we can have these weak, um, you know, EF0, EF1 type tornadoes, even outside of, uh, you know, like our hurricane related tropical cyclone tornadoes. Yeah, it just shows you how quickly the dynamics can change there in the Sunshine State. So, Senior Meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Miami, Robert Garcia, thank you for joining us here on Fox Weather. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.